what's going on YouTube, it's James here, and there's some do's and there's some don'ts when it comes to real estate investing. There's six things that I wanna share with you guys that three things that you do and three things that you do not, and you definitely do not want to do these. So the first don't in real estate is, don't let fear overcome you when it goes to deciding if you should buy a property or you shouldn't buy a property. Fear should have no factor in if you are going to buy a property or not. Now, I'm going to share a personal story. And if you follow the, followed me on the channel for a while, you've already heard this. And with that being said, if you're not part of this family, hit that subscribe button and that like button down below to be part of this family because I feel like we're a community and we're this, this one big family. So back whenever I was buying my my very first property, um, the one in Indianapolis, Indiana, that that was a scary time because as you guys know, I, you know, I'm, I'm an out of state investor. So this was my very first property I was investing in out of state. Whenever I went to buy this property, I've, I've never seen it before. Um, I didn't see it until I actually put the tenant in there. But back to the personal story, I was I was getting in the shower and all of a sudden it hit me. Anxiety hit me, fear hit me. I got a text from the, uh, my, my realtor down there with the, with the videos of the property and all of a sudden it got really real. And that scared the crap out of me. What if I wasn't doing this right? What if my numbers are wrong? Um, what if this property doesn't have enough equity? And what if I don't get a tenant in there and I might have to come out of pocket? Guys, these are some things that might pop into your head when you're going to invest in your first property, especially out of state when you haven't even seen the property. But let me tell you this. If you follow this channel and you follow the things that I teach you, you are going to be able to come overcome these fears. And I talk about this all the time. When it comes to your first property, the money that you're saving from your day job, the mortgage of your first property should not exceed the amount that you are saving from your day job. And that's because if you don't get a tenant in there, that kind of eliminates the fear right there. If you don't get a tenant in there, you're able to cover that mortgage because you're saving this amount of money every single month from your day job. And that's exactly what I did. I thought about all these things and I thought about my, my big why, which is, as you know, it's my son. I thought about this moment whenever uh, I was laying on the couch and he was just staring up at me. He He's my why. He helped me overcome up here. And also knowing my numbers, trusting my numbers, and I got through it, and so can you. Hit that like and that subscribe button because my wife does not, she still hasn't, so I need every single one of you guys to do it, thanks. And the second don't is don't expect to get rich fast. Real estate is not a fast paced game. If you're wholesaling and if you're flipping properties, it's not really uh, get rich quick. There's a lot more risk and a lot more time in finding these deals and you know, flipping them or wholesaling them. So when you're investing in real estate, don't expect to get rich quick. So from what I teach people, in four to six years is a attainable goal. And what I mean by attainable is you can get that. I'm retiring in four years right now before I even turn 30. You can easily get that. I just started, you know, six, seven months ago. You can easily retire in real estate for four to six years. Some of you might be thinking, you know, that that's quick, that's great. Then it is, you know, you then expect to get rich quick, because and not necessarily rich. It's it's wealthy because you're not having to trade money for uh, trade time for money anymore. And the last don't I want to talk to you about is don't go into a deal not knowing your numbers. Don't do that ever. I always tell people, you know, your first deal is your your most important one. It's not going to get you rich. As for example, it's not going to get you rich quick like we just talked about. But don't go into a deal without knowing your numbers. Don't blindly pick a deal, like a, a deal that you find on the MLS and be like, you know what, let's, let's go for that because I can afford the down payment. No, just because you can afford the down payment doesn't mean it's going to cash flow. That doesn't mean you're going to make any money. And sometimes that means you're gonna be losing money every single month. And if you follow me here on the channel, I upload live cash flow analysis deals and I go live just about two to three times uh, a, a week. So, and I do a live analysis with you so you can know these numbers and you can just eliminate this, this fear that goes into possibly not knowing your numbers. Comment down below what you think the biggest don't or the biggest do in real estate is so you can help other people whenever they come across this video what you personally think that the biggest do or don't is in real estate. So comment that down below, thanks. So we're gonna hop right over to the do's. Some things, three things that you want to do in real estate. And the first thing that you're gonna to want to do is find a mentor. Find someone that is, you know, if you're just starting out, find someone that has two to three properties 
you know, more than what you do. So two to three properties. And why is that? Why don't you want to get someone that has a thousand, two thousand, three thousand deals? Because they know where you are right now. These people that have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand properties, yeah, they they were where you're at right now. But that was so long ago that they lost the feeling of what it was like to start. Yeah, they might be able to give you some valuable information. And if you're just starting out, you can know the basics, but the biggest thing when you're just starting out is fear. That's the biggest thing. So the first thing you're gonna want to do in real estate is find a mentor that can trust, that can teach you, you know, cash flow analysis, uh, teach you how to find equity inside of a property, teach you you know, where to go, uh, what markets to go into, who to talk to, and etc. And the second do you're gonna want to do in real estate is, you know, set up a team. What does that mean exactly? Because I feel like people brush over this because people think, you know, having a team is someone you're gonna have to talk to every single day. That's not what it means. A team is get your realtor, real estate agent, uh, get your contractor, get your lender, and that's it. You don't have to talk to them every single day. You're just, you know, whenever you're buying the properties, you're probably gonna be talking to these people every single day, if not every other day. But after the after the fact, you know, they're just sending you, realtors are just sending you deals, lenders are just sitting on the side waiting for you to ask for money, contractors are sitting on the side waiting for, you know, a contracted job for you to do a rehab. Uh, but whenever you're setting up a team, you're not talking with these guys every day. And I feel like that's a very bad misconception people get when I and a bunch of other people say you got to set up a team. So I wanted to clarify that really quick. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram. It's up here. Um, and if you're not part of our, our Facebook group, it's going to be down in the, uh, the, the description down below. Uh, just click on the link and it'll take you to the Facebook group. Just try to join it and I'll get a notification and I'll accept you. I post there and on Instagram two to three times a day. So I think you take some real value out of being a part of both of those groups. And the third thing is research a market. Now you might be saying to yourself, James, how do I research a market? No one, te no one tells me how to research a market. Exactly, this is what I'm gonna be teaching you right now. It's going on Zillow, finding out the home prices. You might spend a week finding out, you know, what the average home price is in a certain area. This is like looking, looking in Zillow um, every single day for about two to three hours, looking at the properties that are hitting the market, etc. And then you're going to want to take some of the properties every single day, some of the properties that you've looked up, then you're going to take those properties and you're gonna scroll down Zillow and you're gonna see the monthly cost of it. Then you're gonna take that property and put it into rentometer.com. The link is in the description. You're gonna plug it in, plug in the address, plug in the rent, uh, the beds, if it's a house, condo, etc. And then you're gonna hit analyze address. And that's gonna bring you up what type of rents are going for that area, um, for that specific bed in that neighborhood. And then you're gonna take that, what that rent is, and you're gonna put it against the monthly cost of Zillow, what you just looked up. Then you're gonna be able to decide if it's going to cash flow or not, depending on if it's gonna be a lease option or if it's just gonna be a straight rental. And that's what I mean by researching the market. You know, find these properties on Zillow.com or go to a realtor and have them set, set you up with an automatic email listing and then take that property address, put it in Zillow, find out the monthly cost, and then take it to rentometer.com and find out what the, the rent is for that neighborhood. And then, then you can tell if it's cash flowing or not. There's gonna be a video popping up over here or over here. If you wanna make some uh, extra money from these side hustles that are very unique and that I personally use myself and uh, have generated me over $1,000 a month for the past few months. Until next time, guys, I'm out. See ya.